Hi everyone, welcome to Think Woodworks. My name is Izzy Swan. You know my dad always said, if you want to stand out from the crowd, look at where everybody else is going and then go the other direction. It's good advice. Today I want to show you a very cool, really easy thing that you can do to really make your work stand out. You know, you can take a pretty ordinary piece of furniture and make it look really cool. And there's a real simple way of doing that. And that's with vinyl. Not the stuff that you put on your sheets but vinyl decals. Uh, not something you widely see used on furniture, but you can do some really cool stuff with it. Here, check this out. I'm doing a little vinyl work today, and I thought I would show you guys how easy it is, but I'm not building furniture. In my case, I'm doing cornhole boards. Alright, so let's talk about surface preparation. Um, in this case, I built my cornhole boards out of half inch plywood that is already primed on one side, so that makes it handy. Once I did that, once I, I put another coat of primer on it after it was built and sanded out, and then I put one light coat of gloss paint on the top and two coats along the sides where the sides are going to be exposed. Now, you can put this stuff on bare wood, but I don't, I never have, I've always put, if I put it on just a wood surface, I typically will do a spray shellac or something over it, then sand it out before I put it on. But you want to make sure that your surface that you're putting on is nice and smooth, anything that is happening here on the wood will show through, will come through the vinyl, you'll see those, if there's small divots or whatever, you'll see that when the vinyl's put on. But, you know, if you're going to put it on painted furniture like we saw earlier in that, um, in the, uh, the kids dresser, you want to make sure you use a semi-gloss or a high-gloss paint on the surfaces that you're going to be putting the um, vinyl on. And if it's a kid's piece of furniture, high-gloss is great because it's easy to clean. Most important tool to have, um, just a little plastic spatula, Bondo makes this one. You can pick these up at Walmart for, I think there's three of them, three different sizes for four or five bucks. And then a sharp knife. To start with, you're gonna take your print, and you wanna kinda of get an idea about where you're gonna line it up. Now there's two different methods for installing this. There's a dry method and a wet method. With the wet, wet method, you take a couple drops of dish soap, You'll spray it all over in, in a spray bottle and spray it all over the surface of the piece that you're going to attach the vinyl to and then spray it on the back and the front of the vinyl. You peel this backer off and then spray both surfaces. What that does is it allows you to move that around a little bit while you're applying it. I don't use that method because then you have to sit around and wait for it to dry. This is actually pretty easy to do it dry the dry method. So start by taking your, your backer and you're going to peel it off. Just peel down about six inches or so along the top. And then what you're going to do is very carefully, this is the make it or break it moment, very carefully line this up with your top edge so it's nice and even all the way across. And once you know you've got it even, you're going to take your spatula, start in the center and work out towards the side, just along the top inch or so. And then I'm going to double check everything. At this point, I can still peel, peel this off if I need to. But once I get beyond this, once I get further down, I'm done. It's, you, you, the vinyl is going to stay where it is if you're using the dry method. So now that I've got it started, I'm just going to go ahead and pull that backer down a little further. And then I'm going to start in the center of the piece, and I'm going to do one pass just down. And then at the top, what I'm going to do is kind of work my way out from the, the center of it down out toward it towards the side, just kind of feathering it out. And I'll do the same on both sides. Now you don't want to go over your work a whole bunch, you just you know, do it in a couple of passes. Get down here. And if you got little air bubbles, you'll see them. Make sure you kind of look in from different angles to see what's going on. I typically work about six inches at a time. That way I know what I'm doing. I can see what's going on here. And then again, start at the center, and then feather your way out. Now 
Okay, when I apply the vinyl, it's always the piece is always going to be leaning. That way, I kind of have gravity to help me hold that vinyl. Now I'm just going to go. I'm going to put it up on a flat surface at this point, and I'm just going to go through and check everything to make sure I don't have any bubbles. And if you do have an air pocket, a utility knife, or with a really sharp point, just poke a hole right in the middle of it, and then working from the outside towards the center of that air pocket, you can just feather it right in. And as long as the hole you put in is so really small, no one will even know it's there. Now once I get that done, I'm going to go make sure I've got a nice clean edge and I'm going to trim it out. Um, utility knives work great. I, I prefer use, this is an electrician's knife, it's for peeling cable. It's got a flat spot right here, so I can put that flat spot right up against my workpiece and hold it there and that the blade will stand proud of the workpiece just a little bit. That way I don't have to worry about uh, my blade tilting and cutting into the, the workpiece. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this and found it informative. You know, using vinyl is a fun way to really set yourself apart from other people's work, especially if you're doing things that, you know, the craft fairs and that sort of thing with kits, furniture, cornhole boards. I have a friend who makes some pretty good money on the weekends just building cornhole boards, and that's, you know, what he does in his free time, and he makes almost as much as he makes in his regular job. So it's an option there too. If you want to make a little extra money, you can do something with your furniture or with cornhole boards or whatever. But anyway, I'd encourage you to go check out the websites. They're in the description box below. Have some fun with it. Pretty much anything you can think of, they can do. We'll be talking to you soon.